Greetings, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today, February 13th, 2022, for those who celebrate Valentine's Day. This has been the weekend for love and lovers in the air. And for those of us who celebrate this traditional day, a shout out to all the lovers and all of us on every day. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss topics relevant to the appeal of Robert Sylvester Kelly and give discussion of topics we have heard over the week by Kelly Nation fans. Thank everyone who faithfully comes to the premiere and shares their posts and comments every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have a shout out to all the new subscribers. You are so awesome. And I thank you, thank you, thank you for following this podcast um, because I'm going to follow it to the end till the um, appeal has been, you know, gone through how, you know, hopefully with the win. So today we're going to be sharing thoughts about collective consciousness and the power of our positive thoughts towards Robert Sylvester Kelly at this particular time. We will give some examples of how our thoughts can set him free. And finally, we're going to share some Kelly Nation thoughts, concerns, and feelings that made their way to me this week. So let's get right into the segment. In talking about Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly, we must always see him on the stage, doing his thing, looking good, always making the next top hit. We must always see him in the light of happiness, protection, and love through his higher power and our our higher power. This is a collective mindset. And our Kelly Appeal TV would like to share what a collective mindset is defined as. A collective mindset is when we think collectively in a positive momentum and in a positive way about someone or something. For example, a study was performed um, with 12 individuals who desired to do a conscious collective experiment. They split themselves into two groups, and each person in the group were given a plant. Group number one was told to wish good positive energy on their plants, play music, and give it sunlight and water each day. Group two was given no instructions at all. Group one blessed and provided music to their plants. Group two had three successful plants as they had performed nurturance and thought positively about the plants without being told. The other three people forgot to water their plants, kept their plant in a room with no sunlight, barely recognized its presence. Those plants did not survive. The point was collective and individual thinking works in unison. It works both ways. Um, Group A is a great deal like our Kelly Nation fans, wanting to see his success wanting to see him successful, blessing and being blessed and safe. Now, group B are those individuals who are merely looking at the situation from an emotional point of view with individuals who were not as forthcoming as they should have been, who judged him from a position of personal testimony. Could they have lied to get revenge? This was first stated by Robert Sylvester Kelly's first counsel Stephen Greenberg. I'm not sure either way. I will say that I have seen women in my life ruin men because of being embarrassed and humiliated. And to be a public figure and be embarrassed and humiliated, that right there is a scar that takes a lifetime to heal. So let's look at the R. Kelly situation from another angle. We're going to use the girl 
and we're going to name her Candy. Candy is dating R. Kelly during his prime back in the 90s. He tells her, you got that vibe, you know, that she reminds him of something, you know, um, you know, all the good stuff that Candy wants to hear. Well, Candy is on flights on to spend a weekend with R. Kelly and they are in love, so Candy thinks. Her goal is to tame the goat within the superstar. She's unable to tame him. And then he goes on to the next woman that shows interest in him or that he desires. Basic man action, right? (laughs) So Candy is now seen as a love failure in front of the entire world. How does that make her feel? Then she gets a call from Lifetime asking her to do an interview to bring him down, to knock him down to be part of 49 other women who is testifying and being interviewed about their personal relationships with R. Kelly. So imagine how Candy's feeling right now. Manipulation, get back, and jealousy could very well empower Candy to participate in something of this nature. Rather unjust on the part of R. Kelly, (laughs) my My, my, my. My thing is this. Many women have been manipulated by men. Some have scorned men for doing less than what R. Kelly has even, you know, been suggested to have done, convicted to have done. Because they were not the main woman or wife. Oh, and for an ex-wife? having many opportunities to get back by having all these women in her face, divorcing her and a man just blatantly saying, you're just not sexually good enough for me, you know, Um, or this, he needs, he has a bigger appetite. Okay. Um, Everyone's ego is simply at play here. Everybody is dealing with the ego. You got starstruck women willing to do anything to be with R. Kelly for just one night. The other thought can came from a subscriber of R. Kelly Appeal TV, and she stated, if R. Kelly was into all these women all this time, sex cults, diseases, underground promiscuity, where are all the illegitimate children? Shouldn't they have already surfaced by now? (laughs) What are your thoughts on that view? And I think it's a very uh, powerful view. So thank you very much, subscriber, who asked the question, where are the illegitimate children? And you know, if there were any, they would have been coming forward. They didn't think to put that in the stew. They didn't think to make that an action. Why? Because the proof proof is in the blood. I mean, in a pop culture, men can have eight, nine, 10, 12 babies with different baby mothers and have no repercussions. They don't go to jail. They don't go to prison. This is just an immoral act. And that's what we have to work on when we're thinking about collective consciousness. It is similar to wishing, meditating, and or praying on either the downfall or the success of another human being or natural element, including the weather, even spirit form for that matter. That's another topic. We'll talk about that another day. But the power that we possess as a Kelly Nation team is that we have the power to empower him through our positive thoughts about him. What are your thoughts about collective consciousness? Do you think we can really do this by consciously meditating on him day and night to be successful like that first group in that plan experiment? Do you think we can produce a positive outcome that's selective for his success? You know, I watched a good movie called The Fabric of a Man by David Talbert. It's an old, you know, play. 
But if you get a chance, please check it out and get back to me about your views on it. There's this man in the play called Blair. And he's in a relationship with a woman called Dominique. And his goal is to tame her. There were so many parts of that play that made me think about how men do what they do, how women do what they do. I brought that play up because it is a very tricky thing to discuss the emotions of women and men. One perspective that has actually came out in a positive way for this R. Kelly scenario is that women should know now that when they are abused verbally, mentally, physically, emotionally, or spiritually, they are to leave the first time it happens. Not the second, not the 10th year, not the 20th year. No, not that he's going to change because he's not going to change. You get out immediately. Not because the rent is being paid, not because of superstar status, not because you're afraid of him or her or anything like that. Leave the first time. You will have no fear because the fear is reduced when you no longer have that anxiety, that stress. Get help immediately. Go to counseling. Get your own job. Don't expect a man to pay your way through life. Don't expect a woman to pay your way through life. Children, when you're a certain age, you should be working. Parents are not even supposed to pay your way through life. Make the domestic violence reports, people, and follow through. We are no longer victims in this world because of this situation and because of the women and because of the things that they did say. The reality of it is, is they're not even victims. Why? Because they had the opportunity to leave. They were starstruck. So after this, there shouldn't be too many situations of, Oh, victimization. You know, now black women are heard. This is the turning point of the century relating to how women are being treated in today's society. That has been what we should have learned from the R. Kelly court case on this emotional side of the situation. So it was a blessing to see all the prayers that went up regarding the R. Kelly COVID-19 con contact. Again, keep believing. And it's amazing that he caught COVID during the same time that he was supposed, because I think February 3rd, was some significant pivotal point in the appeal process for him, but he couldn't make it because of the fact that he um, contracted the, the COVID. But again, keep believing, keep knowing that we are great within the thoughts about R. Kelly. Deep, deep down in our souls where the dark meets light, we need to and embrace what we really feel and why we're on this side. Why are we here with him? You know, know that we are not dealing with the flesh and blood, but the principalities of wickedness in high places. That can also be stated a different way. This is how I look at it. We are not dealing with the physical elements of human beings. We are dealing with the source of our higher power, that protects us regularly. With that, no weapon is greater than the power of our mind, the intuition and self-worth within us. I refuse to define what Google used as a definition for collective consciousness. Um, it was very negative and the connotations that came from that is only there to prevent a collective from using their mindsets together to create a paradigm shift in this chaos that's going on. Because if we can do it for this, we can do it for, you know, world health. We can do it for financial 
you know, blessings where all people in the world are eating and, and flourishing and growing. And, oh, wouldn't that make some of the people that are not as powerful as we are very angry because they they wouldn't have the power to keep up the lies that they tell about people. See, these principalities are strong. Feel free to research the collective consciousness definition from Google for yourself. I normally do it and I quote them as a secondary source, but I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna create my own primary source and this is from the works of R. Kelly Appeal TV. Collective consciousness is the positive vibration of what we think and feel about an individual or person or other. It can either go either way. It's up to how we're thinking as a collective group. And I think we've done it many, many times in basketball games, football games, you know, when we're betting on the races, all that is energy being consumed from collective consciousness from the individuals that are at that event. Afterwards, create your own definition like I did based on your mores and your belief and experience. I believe that R. Kelly should be free. I feel he needs psychological support, but I do not, nor will I ever believe that he should be thrown away like they are trying to do and not succeeding to do within, you know, the way that they're handling our friend at this time. There's a great deal of information here on this 17th segment. It feels so good. Um, I need you to meditate and think about all that has been shared in this podcast. Everyone has their reasons why they are for or against R. Kelly. We have to say one thing also. It's bringing the world together again. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, viewing this podcast, sharing, keeping the comments and emails coming. We love you and bless you all. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next Sunday.